Hi, my name is Nancy, and I'm working with Alan Alda on this year's Flame Challenge. This first video is all about audience. Why audience? Because at the Alan Alda Center for Communicating Science, this is the very first thing we talk about and one of the most important things. You need to know who your audience is. You need to know what they care about and why they might possibly care about what you have to say to them. You need to build on those things and find an audience-specific goal. Your audience for the Flame Challenge, as you might already know, are 11-year-olds, 5th and 6th graders from all over the world. Knowing this audience, or at least knowing a little bit about them, is going to help you make the best possible entry. It's going to make you be able to craft your entry in a way that is engaging and exciting and makes them want to learn more. In this video, you're going to meet some actual real-life 11-year-olds. You're going to find out a little bit about them, what they care about, what they like to do. Let's go meet them now. Dancer, so we both like to dance when we hang out. Ah, is there like a particular type of music that oh, you like? Yeah, like ballet dancing. We watch like videos like from like famous people basically. What we do when we're home, like play games and all those. Cool. I like to play outside. My favorite thing is engineering. Engineering? Do you, do you make things? Have you made things? Cool. My other favorite thing I like to do is um, cook. Cook? Does anybody else like to cook? Make food? Uh, does anyone else just like to eat? <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> do, you, do you all like to learn? Yeah. yeah. Or is it something that you're like, Ugh. You do like to learn. Yeah. Cool. What's your, what are your favorite subjects? Yeah. Uh, social studies. Social studies. Cool, what else? I like math a lot. Math, what do you like about math? I like that you can do multiple things with math and it, it like adds some concepts of like actual real life. Like you know, like it helps you later on in life. I like social studies mm -hmm. and reading. Cool. I like how we like get to learn like what our ancestors did before us, like, like what they did like that we should know. Yeah. Well, yeah. My favorite is war because it shows that that we shouldn't make the same mistakes that people did in the past. How about how about science? Do you like science? Yeah. 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 Kind of. No. Do you have a f no, no, you don't. <laughs> what? Why? Why don't you like it? It's just very confusing because they teach you like step by step, and some of them it's like very like complex. hard. Yeah, complex and very hard to explain sometimes. Yeah. Does anybody in here really like? Science? Interesting. Cool. What do you like about it? I like to learn uh, science because like you measure and it, like in real life, you, like you have to measure like in baking, like it's like it's chemistry baking, right? Yeah. yeah. I like to learn about the human body because I find it interesting, like how our bodies work. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part about how your body works, or like the coolest thing you learned in science? System. Respiratory system. Cool. The cool thing that I ever did was um touch bo um like body parts of animals. Oh, last wow. year. Did you, like, in dissecting them? Yeah, dissecting them. Ooh, ooh, what did you dissect? The trachea, the heart, and the, the type of the eyeball. If you have to learn something in science, what would be, like, your favorite way to learn? Um, like, textbooks being easier to, like, understand, because, like, these days the textbooks are, like, so complex that you can't really figure out what, like, you're trying to read, mm. like you read it, but you don't understand what it's about. Um, my favorite way to learn is asking the teacher questions in science, because I feel like it's like a little more easier for me than rather than like reading a textbook that sometimes doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Uh, mine is like when a teacher does like a visual of what you're learning. Imagine that someone came up to you and they asked, "What is climate? How? What do you think that is?" And it's like, 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 like the seasons like we go through and like, can't really put it in a way, but like, it's like the weather we go through, like if it's warm or if it's cold, like. I think climate 
is like how something is, like it's cold or hot, and like it could be the weather outside. Do you have advice for them? Like based on what you, how you like to learn and how you really don't like to learn, what what do or don't you want to see? Like if they're making a video or like drawing sketches or like writing, like make it easy for like kids, even though we're smart, like we can't really conflict, like really go through all the things that they're writing down in a book or like they're saying. Yeah. Or like showing us examples of how they're doing, but like, in the manner that we will understand. Not to use that much um, advanced words. To make it more easy to visualize it, rather than just like a lot of words. Think like a kid. Like, Think like a kid. Don't do everything like it's so complex. Maybe you shouldn't like try to like overthink everything. And like try to make things like, like water it down. Like water down like, like, the, like the really smart things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't give such a brief explanation either. Or right. Don't make it a 30 second video. And don't show us real, really um, advanced pictures. Mm. I want to think about, or ask you to think about, are there other big problems that you think in the world are really important and adults should be dealing with these things? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when uh, uh, oil company is like drilling into the ground, mm. it can move uh, Earth's uh, like, tectonic plates and it can cause the earthquake. Mm. Um, the glacier is melting. The glacier is melting, yeah. That's another big problem. Pollution. Pollution is a big problem. Um, maybe like s slow down like the spreading of diseases because there's because there's, there's a lot of diseases going around. And you should at least like try to slow it down so not as much people get infected. I agree. I think that animals being extinct is another big problem because animals do help us a lot in our lives. Yeah. To how how do how do we connect with uh, animals or how are because, we? Because uh, like a lot of animals like we get food from them as well. So it's kind of like without them, we really wouldn't have like a lot to survive for. Yeah, we kind of all depend on each other. We gotta share the planet a little bit. Like, like um, pulling down trees, like cutting down trees, because like those help us like breathe air. We kind of need air. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Poachers. Poachers. They should be uh, uh, more severe fine or like a longer sentence if it's not severe. Yeah. Entertaining. Entertaining. Simple. Exciting. Exciting. Joyful. I want to see the community because we even offered us an opportunity to see what we thought. I've been doing this for a while. So, uh, keeping things very simple. Um, keeping things very f a lot of fun. They they just they just want to laugh. They just want to learn. But um, if you don't make it simple, if you don't make them laugh, if you don't make, let them have fun, they're not going to learn. They're not going to learn it. They they'll they'll blow you off. It you become like um, the Charlie Brown teacher that wonk 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 wonk, and you can tell when they're staring at you like. Right? They're looking around the classroom or they're tapping the pencil that you've lost them. So you always want to keep their attention any way you can. Might be singing a song, might be acting a little silly, right? But sometimes you just got to do it. I, I think people think that they are, um, that 11 year olds are just like kids, almost like babies, and they're not. Um, I've found that I've learned a lot from the kids over the years, even like every day we talk and sometimes I learn things from them, you know, the cool songs and, um, you know, the things they wear and they, they, kids make you, you know, if you take the time to listen to them, that they'll share so much with you and you'll get so much more from them, but you have to listen. I just got back from visiting the schools and I don't know about you, but I had so much fun talking to those students. I was surprised by how energetic they were, but how much they wanted to learn and how much fun they want to have while they're learning. Take a moment to consider the things that you were surprised to learn, the things that stuck with you, and especially the advice they gave to you. Remember what the teacher said as well, the importance of listening and using what they told you to help build your entry. I had an opportunity to talk to Hannah Holt, 
Hannah was last year's written category winner for the Flame Challenge. She has a lot of advice, and I think it's going to help you. She joined us via Skype, so let's listen to what she has to say. When I went to create my entry last year, the first thing I thought about was when did I learn about this for the first time? And it took me back to being in school as a child. And I remember my teacher had taught us the theory of energy and the equations. And then what he also did is he built this ramp in the middle of the classroom and he showed us the difference between potential and kinetic energy. And that image really stuck with me. It stayed sticky in my mind. And as a writer, you can create those same kind of visuals that will stay with your readers. And you do this by creating scenes. A scene is something that's specific. It's concrete, an example of what you want to do. And all good informational text usually has a combination of summary, which is the broad theory behind the thing, and scene, which are the specific application. You want to think very carefully about the words that you use. Um, it's kind of like if you were driving in the country and you reach a cattle guard. Now, a cattle guard is a type of bridge. It's a bridge that lets cars across it because wheels have no problem with cattle guards. But when the cow approaches the cattle guard, they look at it and they don't move forward because they think they're going to fall. And when you're using your words, you want to be sure that your re reader doesn't feel like they're going to stumble, that there's going to be such a big gap between what they know and the words that they use, that maybe they would need to read a book just to understand the word that you used. It's not about dumbing things down. I mean, the worst thing you can do is insult your audience, and, um, especially 11 year olds. You're going to hate it if you make it babyish, but you can still communicate on a very high level but use words that aren't in themselves a barrier to understanding the information and thereby you're creating this bridge between what they know and what they need to know so that your text doesn't become a cattle guard obstacle to the information but that it really becomes a true bridge to success that they can cross. We've included a worksheet along with this video to help you walk through that process, to think about what an 11-year-old might find interesting and what they might want to know, to step back into those shoes and think about things from their perspective. In fact, we challenge you to think if maybe you even have a real-life 11-year-old in your life that you can run this by. Read your entry to them. Show your video to them. Have them look at the graphic entry that you made. Get their feedback. Use it. We challenge you. Please keep it simple. Please make it amusing. Please make it interesting so it grabs people's attention. Please make it easy to learn and be fun. Please make it fun. Please make it entertaining for us. They're smarter than you think they are. Good luck.